Good morning. Today is Tuesday the 9th of February and it's a feria in the church's fifth week in ordinary time. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. We continue first reading the book of Genesis, chapter 1, the creation of the world, and on the fifth and sixth day, it's the creation of animals and then human beings, but it's leading up to the seventh day, the Shabbat, the day of rest. To read an extract, God created man in the image of himself, in the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. God blessed them, saying to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and conquer it. Be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven and all living animals on the earth. God said, See, I give you all the seed-bearing plants that are upon the whole earth and all the trees with seed-bearing fruit. This shall be your food. To all wild and beasts, all birds of heaven and all living rip clouds on the earth, I give all the foliage of plants for food. And so it was. God saw all that he had made, and indeed it was very good. Evening came and morning came, the sixth day. Thus heaven and earth were completed with all their array. On the seventh day God completed the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day after all the work he had been doing. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on that day he had rested from all his work of creating. Such were the origins of heaven and earth when they were created. The Word of the Lord. The Gospel continues in Mark chapter 7, verses 1 to 13. The Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered round Jesus. They noticed that some of his disciples were eating with unclean hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and the Jews in general follow the tradition of the elders and elders and never eat without washing their arms as far as the elbow. And on returning from the marketplace, they never eat without first sprinkling themselves. There are also many other observances which have been handed down to them concerning the washing of cups and pots and bronze dishes. So these Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not respect the tradition of the elders, but eat their food with unclean hands? He answered, It was of you hypocrites that Isaiah so rightly prophesied in this passage of Scripture. The people honours me only with lisp service, while their hearts are far from me. The worship they offer me is worthless. The doctrines they teach are only human regulations. You put aside the commandments of God to cling to human traditions. And he said to them, How ingeniously you get round the commandment of God in order to preserve your own traditions. For Moses said, Do your duty to your father and your mother. And anyone who curses father or mother must be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, anything I have that I might have used to help you is Corbin, that is, dedicated to God, then he is forbidden from that moment to do anything for his father or mother. In this way you make God's word null and void for the sake of your tradition which you have handed down and you do many other things like this. The Gospel of the Lord. There's some wonderful areas to talk about in today's readings. I'll begin with the Gospel, where Jesus asked why his disciples don't keep the traditions of the law. They're not referring here to the traditions that were written down in the Torah, but the traditions of the, the further traditions that were handed on orally, i.e. mouth to mouth down the generations, because many of these rules regarding pots and pans, washing of hands, etc., 
are the oral traditions that kind of go alongside those written in scripture. And Jesus replies and gives them such a strong example of how they use these oral traditions as a way of being getting round what scripture says. And he calls them hypocrites. And the example he gives is that Moses and the commandment said, fourth commandment, honour your father and your mother, look after them. They brought you into this world and brought you up. But if anything that you were going to give them, money or houses or whatever it was, care in old age, you say, oh no, that is what I'm going to dedicate to God, then it belongs to God and you can't give it to your mum and dad. And so in that way they nullify anything to do with looking after their parents. And Jesus gives us an example to them of how, what hypocrites they are. And of course it's a message that we're going to hear and repeat constantly and which got so up their noses and why Jesus was so hated by the Pharisees and scribes. The first reading continues the story of the creation of the world. And we must remember that it's not a story about the past. It's a story about the present. It's saying what the relationship is between human beings, between nature, between all that goes on in this world. We hear the sixth day, the creation of the animals. And note at this point, all the animals feed on leaves and foliage. They don't eat each other. And we hear this creation of human beings. Interesting, the word Adam, which we always think of as a male name, in Hebrew is neutral, it's human. And then God says, I will also make female as well and make Adam male. So what was generic, he made specific into two genders, male and female, Adam and Eve. But the highlight of the story is not so much the six days of creation, which were all good, but the seventh day, the Shabbat, the Sabbath, where God rested from his work and said that day is to be made holy. Now the word holy, it's always a difficult word to define, but in the original Hebrew it just means separate. So something that's holy is put on one side or put apart. And that's how the Sabbath is understood by the Jews even today. It's the day that's put apart. It's the day you don't do all your ordinary work, your ordinary things. It's the day put apart for the service of God. I just want to reflect briefly that part of Day five and day six is that Adam and Eve, man, Adam, are given responsibility for this world. And it is part of the teaching of the church now, especially in the recent encyclical of Pope Francis, Laudato Si, that we must look after creation. And in these very cold days, I was reflecting on the one thing that's so important at the moment, the boiler that which is heating the, the gas, heating the water that goes into the radiators that makes this house warm. And I know not all of us have gas boilers. Some people have either oil, same problem, or electric, again, same problem, but one removed. But we're told that within 15 years, we can no longer use gas boilers, that they'll be forbidden to be replaced within a year or so. And we're going to have to go to a couple of other technologies that they're talking about at the moment, either heat pumps where you dig a hole deep 30, 40, 50 feet into the ground and use the slight difference in temperature because down there it's slightly warmer than the surface. It's not the most efficient heating system but it does mean that one can bring heat up uh, and then slowly accumulate it in the house. It does require much greater insulation for houses to be heated by heat pumps, but they're very expensive. And of course you have to have ground where you can uh, dig these holes, um, and many flats, etc. don't have that. Or the alternative is electric heating, under floor heating, um, storage heating, all those forms of electric heating, and the most inefficient of all, blower heaters. But electricity itself has to be generated, and there's no way that the amount of electricity needed to do all the heating that we need could possibly come from wind pumps or from far farm wind, wind windmills. So we're really rather stuck as to how we're going to heat in the future. 
And I think it's something that uh, if any of your children are wondering what to go in for, tell them to become engineers that can work out how to create uh, exhausts from gas boilers to turn all the carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, all the noxious gases, into something safe and harmless so that we don't keep polluting the world and causing uh, climate change. We turn now to our bidding prayers. The response is, you are our saviour and our God. As Christians called to, call to share the life of God, let us praise the Lord Jesus, the High Priest of our faith. You are our saviour and our God. Almighty King, you have baptised us and made us a royal priesthood. May we offer you a constant sacrifice of praise. You are our saviour and our God. Help us to keep your commandments, so that through your Holy Spirit we may dwell in you and you in us. You are our Saviour and our God. Everlasting wisdom come to us, dwell with us, dwell with us and work in us today. You are our Saviour and our God. Help us to be considerate and kind, grant that we may bring joy, not pain, to those we meet. You are our Saviour and our God. We pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Look with favour on our morning prayer, Lord, and in your saving love, let your light penetrate the hidden places of our hearts. Renewed and enlightened, may, sorry, may no sordid desires darken our minds, renewed and enlightened as we are by your heavenly grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. God bless.